Hey there, YouTube. Smith from Minute Maintenance coming at you again with this 2010 Impala. Today we're changing front brakes. I know what you're thinking. If you watched the last video where I changed the wheel bearing, you might be thinking, hey, isn't this the same day? Did you just wait till dusk and change your shirt trying to trick us into thinking that you're working on this vehicle completely separately on a completely different day? I would never do that, guys. Come on. We're family. We can trust each other. Regardless, we got to get some maintenance done. So let's get this car jacked up. Let's get these front wheels off. All right, guys, again, we have a 2010 Chevy Impala before us, and today we got to change the front brakes. Now, I did do the wheel bearing on the driver's side. That was causing an issue. It, fallen, it literally fell apart in my hands, as you saw in the video, if you watched the last video, for the wheel bearing help assembly change on this particular vehicle. It fell apart in my hands when I was taking it out. When I was doing that, I noticed the front brake pads were bad as well, so I had the owner pick up a pair of front brake pads. She dropped them off when she got off work, and now here we are at dust. So I'm going to take this wheel off once again. Would have been nice to have those brake pads so I could have done it all in one shot, but that's all right. It means I get to make a second video for you. And again, to get that wheel off, we're going to get ourselves a four-way spinner. Most vehicles, all vehicles, come with a jack, correction, a lug nut wrench in the trunk. A four-way spinner is always my favorite way to go to. You can pick these up at any auto parts store, Walmart, Amazon, whatever. comes with four different sizes of millimeter heads on the end of it. So you can pick which one works for your particular vehicle. I need a 19 millimeter. You go ahead and put that on there. Let's see which size is 19. That's 21. This cat right here. Slip it on. And it also, because of its design, gives it the ability to put one hand on each side. And you can really torque on it to break it free. Let's go ahead and loosen up these nuts because you want to loosen up the lug nuts while the vehicle's on the ground. That way to prevent the wheel from spinning at all. If it's jacked up, the wheel might spin and you might be just chasing your tail all day long. So just leave it on the ground and get these loosened up. All right, guys, dust really snuck up on us here pretty quick. The sun's setting fast, so I got my, my light on now. Now, once you get the lug nuts loosened up, you can go ahead and take your jack and your jack stand. Now, on a vehicle like this, GM vehicles, unibody vehicles, they have what's called a pinch weld. As you can see underneath here, this section here is called the pinch weld. That's what they want you to jack onto and put your jack stand onto. The problem with this is it's a very thin piece of metal. They rust, every vehicle rusts, and it just collapses on you and falls apart. So what I like to do is I like to put my jack further back on a suspension mount, engine mount, jack it up that way, and then gently, guys, gently lower it down onto the jack stand using the pinch weld, and I will still keep my jack in place. That way, I can, if anything's falling apart, I can still have a secondary safety and I can jack it up real fast. But now that we got this in place, let's go ahead, remove the rest of the lug nuts by hand and get that tire off. All right guys, once the wheel's off, what I like to do is I like to set it down. That way I have myself a nice little seat where I can get comfortable uh, and sit and just really uh, sit back and relax and admire life. Now, to get the front brake pads off, now this is similar to any vehicle that has a caliper system, rotors, brake calipers, there's drums, and that's where the brakes are on the inside. And when you push the brakes, it expands. It pushes outwards against the drum. This is called the rotor. The caliper pinches in. And so this is this is going to be identical process for any vehicle that has brake calipers. The only difference is going to be what size bolt it is to get the caliper off. So to get this one off, we have two bolts. One up here and one down here. Whoop, whoop, there you are, right there. Those are both 13 millimeters. One here and one up here. 13 millimeters to get just the caliper off. And notice it's a different color. The caliper is black. Now this might not be similar to your particular vehicle, but just notice it's a two piece system here. We have the caliper bracket. We have the caliper itself, okay? The bolts to hold the caliper bracket in are right back here, okay? We're not taking those off. The bracket can stay in place. We just wanna take the caliper off, okay? We're not, we're not bleeding the brakes. There's nothing wrong with our brake hose, our brake line. There hasn't been any fluid loss. Last thing we want to do is open up the bleeder valve here because that's going to put air. Man, focus on this. is very Guys, I'm so sorry. I'm still moving into this new property and I can't find my tripod or my selfie stick. And so it's just very difficult for me to work these angles. So I apologize. But we're not opening up this bleeder valve. If we do that, that puts air into the system. If you put air into the system, then you have to take the process of bleeding it. If we don't open this up, if we don't put air in the system, we, we just save ourselves a whole bunch of time and a whole bunch of headache. We don't have to have to bleed the system. So if you change the hose... If there's a leak somewhere, if you open up this valve, you're introducing air into the hydraulic system, the fluid system, you have to bleed the brakes. Because we're not doing any of that, we don't, we're not having any of those problems, we're not going to do that. All we're going to do is take a 13 millimeter wrench, hook up to a bolt here, set it to lefty loosey righty tighty. Now I like to use a wrench, ratcheting wrench wherever possible, as opposed to a socket wrench because the further away your implement gets from the actual bolt or nut itself, the more chance you have of stripping it out, rounding off an edge, the more play it has. The tighter it is, this wrench goes, let's 
check this out. This wrench goes right up and fully mates up against that. If I had a crescent wrench, my handle would be further out this way. And so I'm putting all my leverage right here towards this section. So we don't want to do that. So 13 millimeter right here. And let's go ahead and loosen her up. And then we're down here on the second one. We got the first one off. Now down here on the second one. And both bolts have been removed. And now, as easy as one, two, three. Sometimes you can get in there with just your bare hands. Sometimes you got to use like a screwdriver to get the caliper off. There we go. And we can, now when you're taking the caliper off, and even if you're taking the bracket off and the caliper is still attached, mind the hose, guys. Mind the hose. Remember what I said about putting air in the system? We don't want to be jostling around in this thing, break the hose, and now we have to deal with all that as well. But also, examine your hose. Make sure there isn't any leaks. Make sure that it looks new, newer, that it's not completely worn out and frayed because these are, are under hydraulic pressure. If you put the brakes on and this thing is, is frayed or old or worn down, it has a tendency to be spongy and expand and not actually push fluid through. But let's go ahead and finish taking this caliper off. Enough yip yapping for me. And that is our caliper. And these are the pistons right here. Brake paddles sit right here and it pushes it in. You can see this thing borderline fully extended. So let's go ahead and get these brake pads off. And these brake pads actually just slide in. There's one, let's slide that off. Wow. Look how bare that is, guys. We'll do a side by side comparison to a brand new one. Guys, you gotta pay attention to your brakes when they start feeling soft, when you start hearing grinding, when you start hearing noises. That's when you gotta, that's just the backing plate, not that big a deal. You gotta get your stuff taken care of. Now this one is fully flat on this side. You can see where the rotor is here. This brake pad is fully made up against this cat. This is the side where the pistons are pushing this thing right into the rotor here. I'm gonna give myself a flathead screwdriver and pry this off. All right guys, once you go ahead and you get, man, look how worn down that is. That is inexcusable. That is inexcusable. I'll have to have a word with this particular owner. Once you go ahead and get that, Peeled off, you want to go ahead and feel on the rotor, both sides. Notice how I'm pinching on both sides. I'm feeling for any obstructions. I'm feeling this way. Because of how bare those brake pads are, it's borderline bare metal. It could be grinding into your rotor, which could cause a warp in it. It could cause the brake pads, the new brake pads to wear out faster, wear unevenly. One side's less, one side's more. You're not, you're not going to have adequate braking. So I like to feel around the entirety of the rotor. I'm feeling for any... Thing that seems out of place everything seems actually pretty smooth surprising there's a little bit of ceramic buildup on the back side here i'll go ahead and take a wire brush and get that cleaned off but before you throw those brake pads away even though they're worn down you're going to need them to reset your pistons here so what you do is you take one of the old brake pads you set it back inside there heck you go ahead and take both if you want to and you get yourself one of these guys here a c-clamp and we use the c-clamp to tighten up on the caliper, on the brake pad, forcing those pistons in place. All right, notice my particular setup that I have right here. I have the C-clamp pressed up against the brake pad and I have the back side of the clamp on a safe spot on the caliper. I don't want to put it where the brake line is. I don't want to put it where the bleeder valve is because this is where the fluid goes in, guys. If I damage this, I could have a fluid link. I could put air in my system. I don't want to do that. Once I have it set up here, all I got to do just twist it. It'll take two hands. One hold it still while I twist. Weep, weep, weep. Tighten this down. It, it's going to push into the brake pad, which is going to push the piston until it's nice, flush, and flat. Otherwise, look how thin this is. This is fully extended because this is thin. The new brake pad's going to be like an inch thick, and you'll see those. And so if I put an inch thick here and an inch thick here, I got no room for my rotor to fit. So let me go ahead and tighten this up and push those pistons back in place. All right, guys, just like that. The pistons are fully reset. Now look at the size difference here. This is one of our brand new brake pads. This is all ceramic material that's going to be used. This back here is just metal. This is what my finger's tapping on. This is what's actually going to be used to slow down your car. And this is one of the old brake pads. It's basically nothing. There's basically nothing there. So these brake pads were long overdue. When you buy a set, they are specific to the front of the back and you get you need one for each side, so we're going to take one of the new brake pads, and what you do is you actually slide it into 
the bracket itself. So let me go from the front. It's a little easier for you guys to see. So if you can reuse this metal hardware here that it came with, great. Otherwise, most brake pads come with new ones. But you want to look it over, make sure it's, it's not obviously bent, dent, put out the wrong way. That's actually what's called the brake pad hardware, and that's what holds the brake pad in place. Otherwise, you just got these ears here, and they just slide into the notches on both sides. So I'll just line up the notch on that side, line up the notch on that side. How about I switch hands? That might help. And just shimmy her in. <laughs> Easier said than done, apparently. Blop, blop, blop. Come on, sucker. Man, there we go. Boom. And I'll we'll do the same thing on the other side. And there you go. Once you have bro both brake pads, put in place and I know maybe you're asking hey what's this big silver thing here that's called a squeal tab when the brake pads start getting low things start squealing the way you know it's time to change your brake pads but if you went ahead and did a good job compressing the pistons back in what you do is you take caliper and it'll literally slide right back in place if not if you're having a hard time hey there's just not enough clearance put the old brake pad back in here and push the c-clamp on there again and make sure you actually got it fully reset and if I did my job right just like that. I should. Boom. Now it's just bolting it back in place. And I got my top bolt here. And we always go hand tight first, guys, before we go on with the wrench. So we're going ahead and get that cat nice and hand tight. Then we grab a 13 millimeter wrench. Socket wrench, if that's all you got. Like I said, I prefer to use a ratcheting wrench or a crescent wrench. And we tighten it down. What's the foot pounds? The, on this channel, for a good enough channel, the answer is, if it's hand tight, it's probably all right. So we got the top one in, we got the bottom one hand tight already, and I'm gonna go ahead and put my wrench on that one, and then we just gotta put the tire back on. And as I'm about to put the wrench on this one, just a reminder guys, don't do one at a time. Put it in hand tight, put the other one in hand tight. Don't put it on, and then wrench it, and then come over here, because now you just made everything nice and tight, and if it's not lined up all the way on this side, you're not able to move it around as easily. So we got that one, and it is, hand tight and we are good to go and we still have and you want to go ahead and grab your rotor give it one of those make sure that you're not so tight again maybe you were, you were able to wedge the caliper on there but still the piston was not fully compressed if you're not able to do this if you're not able to move it that means that this is too tight and something went awry there still needs to be some clearance on there so now all we got to do is put the wheel back on and there you go, guys. Again, it got dark real fast. I'm sure I look atrocious and it's probably a ton of glare off my glasses. I can't really see myself right now because I don't have my recording equipment. I apologize for that. Just getting down and dirty, getting some content out there for you guys. This is a very important, easy thing for you guys to do. Inflation is through the roof. Gas prices are through the roof. Last thing you want to do is pay somebody else to fix your brakes. Now, something I always recommend, guys, if, the, if one side of the front brake is, is squeaking, when you buy the brakes, they come in sets for the front and the back. Just go ahead and change both. We got the front one all done. Now all I have to do is lower the car down on this side. I'm going to go ahead and jack up the other side and do the exact same process. It takes five, ten minutes at the most to do this. Anybody can do this. You guys can do this. Guys, please like, subscribe. Drop any comments or questions below. And as always, guys, find a minute out of your own day to do some maintenance. We'll catch you next time.